Hi, my name is Olivia. I joined Camp Rogers TV to learn how to make a TV show. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I chose Camp Rogers TV because I really like the television industry. My name is Bella, and I did this camp to get the full experience of being on TV and filming. Hi, my name is Keith, and I did this camp because my brother did it, and he thought it was super fun, so I thought I should try. Welcome back to Camp Rogers TV. I'm Daniel. And I'm Madeline. And we're here now with Brent Holmes from Little Ray's Reptiles. So, um, why did you choose out of all jobs to work with animals? Well, I grew up on a farm, so I've always really worked around animals and mm -hmm. I've always had a passion for it, and it's just something I've always felt necessary. I've always felt I like animal conservation, so protecting mm -hmm. species. So I just figured it was natural for me to want to teach other people about it. So that's basically the reason, but obviously working with animals is a really fun job and it's really rewarding as well. Mm -hmm. So what do you usually feed your animals? It depends on the animals. We have um, a lot of herbivores at the zoo, so they only eat plants and we feed them a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables and greens and things. Uh, and then the other ones like the crocodiles and the snakes, which are carnivores. Uh, we feed them mice and rats and chickens and a wide variety of meats and stuff like that too. And then you get the omnivores, which are in between as well, and they eat both plants and animals. When you bring out an animal, have you ever been bitten? Um, it does happen a few times. I got bit actually twice today by an animal. Wow. I was kids hold them at the, one of the Dover Court camps. Okay. And uh, it just happened to bite me. It's nothing. Like I can't even, didn't even see a mark or anything okay. on my hand. Sometimes it hurts a little more than others. Um, but yeah, it definitely does happen. So you have a big stack of animals for us then. Yeah, do you want to see one? Yeah. Yes. All right. So I'll start off with one. It's a little slimy. It's not actually a reptile. Um, it's a member of the amphibian family. And here he is. I call this little guy Booger. Oh. He's called a white tree frog. These guys and all the animals that I brought from here are from Southeast Asia and Australia. Um, and this guy here is actually, I can't let anybody touch them because they're actually poisonous. Okay. And the other thing is too, is they breathe through their skin. Oh, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, these guys are found in the rainforest of uh, so Australia actually, and um, they eat a wide variety of animals. They're carnivores, they'll eat anything that can fit in their mouth. And this is true for all frogs. And this is about as big as he'll actually get. Okay. He has like two different colored eyes. Does he? Yeah. Oh, what you're seeing is actually his pupils are dilated. So one's, oh. one's wide open and one's actually not, not open. So it's just, that's the only thing. It's just how dilated his pupils are. That's do, all. Do the females have different colors than the males? Um, no, they're actually all the same size. Generally males, for frogs, and, for frogs at least, and toads, um, the males are a little bit smaller because when it's time for them to breed, they'll ride around on the female's back. So they kind of, a little bit smaller okay. generally. Cool. Yeah. So these guys here will eat pretty much anything. Cute little guys though, and unfortunately I can't let you guys touch them though. Mm -hmm. Poisonous. Yeah, it's not enough to actually hurt you, and it only hurts you if you lick them or put them in your mouth, and it's gonna just make you feel bad. It's not gonna kill you or anything. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Do you guys wanna see something else? Yes, yes right. please. So put this little guy away. Oh, one sec. So where did this little guy go? Oh, he's hiding. There he is. So I call this little guy Mossy. Oh. He's a wonderful little gecko, and you guys are welcome to pet him. He's very, very soft. He almost feels like fabric. Oh, he's so soft. Oh, he is. That's like almost exactly like fabric. Yeah, oh. and it, people are amazed at how soft they actually are. So that's just the really soft scales that you're feeling. Um, so these little guys here are found on an island called New Caledonia. It's on the western okay. coast of Australia. And um, they're friendly little guys, but not really a recommended pet because they do get stressed out and stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, so these are also the largest gecko. They'll get about a foot and a half long, so about wow. that big. Um, so he's not quite done growing yet. Did you get a chance to try? Yeah, I did. He's really neat. Yeah. And this guy here is also an insectivore. Um, so he does eat a lot of bugs. But these guys also eat like a little uh, baby food type formula that we give them. It just gives them fruits and pureed Aww. fruits, basically that kind of stuff. And all the healthy vitamins and nutrients they need. Yeah. All right. Want to see something else now or do you guys want to? Let's see another one. Let's nice. see another one. All right. So this next little guy. It's actually one of my favorite animals. Um, these guys are found in Southeast Asia. And actually, little is known about them, but what is really interesting to me and what I like about them is that they are a very close relative of Komodo dragons. Oh. So I call this little girl Joanna. She's quite active. <laughs> and here she is. She's very, very friendly, guys, but she is capable of doing a little bit of damage. She has incredibly sharp claws that you can see here. Oh, um, they use those for climbing trees, oh. helping them dig, and actually help catch and kill their prey. Um, what else they use is, is that sh long forked tongue. Uh, yeah. Helps them give them an excellent sense of smell. Um, and they can smell things from a couple, like up to a couple kilometers away. And wow. Komodo dragons have been known to up to 11 miles away. So it's an incredible sense of smell. Um, yeah. But these guys here are quite elusive, meaning they hide a lot. So little is known about them. We don't know if they're an endangered species or if there's hundreds of thousands of these out there and we just can't find them. Okay. And they'll eat pretty much anything they can catch them with power. 
Uh, these guys here have known to even eat cobras. And if a cobra bites them, they actually have a, a, some immunity to their venom. So wow. they're really, really interesting animals. Um, by far my favorite type of lizard in the whole entire mm -hmm. world. It's, uh, it's kind of cute. It is very cute, and they're actually quite smart. You can teach them tricks. Um, these guys are actually even known to work in teams to actually take down larger prey items like crocodiles. Mm -hmm. and they'll kind of lure them out of their way from her yeah. nest, and then they'll come over and dig up the eggs whenever they've lured away. So really, really interesting animals, and a lot of research is being very, very thanks. You guys want to pet them again? And they have that long tongue too, that helps them swim and it also can be used as a weapon to defend themselves with, like as a whip. Oh, they're amazing climbers. They love to climb trees. Um, they also swim underwater. These guys, have, I've heard of reports of up to over an hour underwater, but I think that's stretching it a little bit. It's kind of Well. Yeah, this guy here is way I more dangerous. And you gotta be careful because he's so okay. fast. Whoa. Everybody, this is Philip. Here he is. I'm going to put him down on the table. Hopefully he doesn't make too much of a mess. Mm -hmm. So this year is called an elongated tortoise. Mm -hmm. These guys are from Southeast Asia. Okay. I mean, well, you guys are welcome to pet him. And that's his shell right there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that they can take the shell yeah. off. Well, he's very, very cool. Oh, very we cool. seem to be out of time. But thank you very much for talking no problem. to us. Thanks for having me on today, guys. Thanks, Daniel. We are thanks, now Alan. going to take a look at musical theater camp. I'm Karen, and I'm here at the Blues Fest Festival House with Chanel Hutchinson to learn a little bit more about the musical theater camp. So Chanel, what are some of the things that you teach at musical theater camp? We do things like acting, dancing, and singing. Could you go a little bit more into depth about the different aspects you teach? Uh, so we learn techniques about stage and stage presence and our volume. Uh, we do singing and acting skills, so we learn how to develop those skills to put on a really good show. Do you need a musical theater background to join? You do not, so you just have to have energy. What methods do you think work best when teaching the campers? Positivity. So as long as you are positive with everyone and you have fun at the end, nothing else matters. I just want to have fun. What do you enjoy most about working at musical theater camp? Uh, this is my favorite job. It makes me super happy. Um, and being around kids that are full of energy and just want to have fun and they're themselves, that makes my job a lot easier. Is there a final performance at the end? There is a final performance, so it's on Friday at 12.30 here at Pisoma Festival House. How do you sign the roles for the final performance? We do a mini audition and uh, kids can sing and do little acting bits for us and then depending on their energy and their acting skills, we base the characters on them. Thank you, Chanel, for your time. For Camp Rogers TV, I'm Kira Posbon. Why did you want to become a police officer? Well, you know, originally I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a police officer. Originally I wanted to be a teacher. But then I realized that uh, I wanted to help more than just kids. And I thought, well, why, where better to do that than being in policing? Um, I thought that there was a lot of areas in the police that I could go and, and basically have new careers every three or four years. And I've been lucky. I've been able to do that. Is it hard to live with all the bad things you've seen? You know, some days it's, it's pretty hard, but I'm really lucky and I have a lot of family and friends around who I can rely on. And I also know that there's programs uh, available to police to, uh, to help us really talk through some of those things. Um, but there, there are some pretty challenging things that uh, we see and we hear and uh, you know, we, have to, we have to know that we're just people so that we're going to take the time to look after ourselves. Because I can't look after somebody else unless I can look after me. And the story that I often tell people is, you know when you get an airplane and then they say, make sure that you put your own oxygen mask on before you try and help someone else? Same thing for the police. I've got to make sure I'm okay before I can help somebody else. So how many criminals did you caught? How many criminals? I've arrested a lot of people. Um, especially when I was in patrol. When I was on the, the front line driving around a police car, I arrested a lot of people. Um, I really don't know the number. And then I went to the sexual assault and child abuse unit and I arrested a lot of people there. But I think even more important was the number of people I helped. And I'm going to say that that's the thousands because lots of people I've had the opportunity to help them. It's as simple as helping them up when they fall and some as difficult as when they've lost somebody in their family. So it's a, it's a really gratifying job. Okay, so have you ever arrested somebody and that by mistake and then figured out they were innocent? 
Yes, absolutely. See, what happens when the police arrest somebody is we base it on the information that we're given. And sometimes people, when they, when they tell you that something happened, they are just one witness. So often we, we speak to the first witness and they'll tell us, absolutely, that's the person. And then you speak to a couple more witnesses and you come to realize quite quickly that that wasn't the right person. Thankfully for me, yeah. I, when I arrested them, I just told them they were under arrest. I hadn't put them in handcuffs or you know, really okay. had to have any kind of interaction with them. Just said, right now you're under arrest for, and we waited till other officers spoke to other uh, witnesses and we were able to say, yeah, you're not the right person.